What's going on, everybody? I'm Jeremy. This is Xena. You guys are watching Warful S'mores. This week's video, figured we'll talk about carpet pythons. So before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Uh, hit that like button because it helps our videos get out there into the algorithm. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see more carpets. Because look at this girl. This girl deserves a hit on that like button just because of how beautiful she is. And plus because this is Xena and anybody that watches the channel on a regular basis knows the stories about Xena. So it's actually awful. It's, it's just fantastic that she's doing this good being out and she's just come a long, long way. That being said, let's get into this video. To start off, a little bit about carpets. Carpets come from like around Australia uh, and in and around that area. You do notice uh, that I kind of get a little sidetracked with her. Xena's not exactly fully trustworthy. <laughs> um, there are six subspecies of carpets. There's jungles, coastals, Darwins. Uh, there's a, there's some others. Those are just kind of like some of the bigger ones. Uh, so if you're depending on what you're getting into carpet wise, do your research because each one of them has slightly different care and also. Uh, they get to slightly different lengths. Uh, their lengths vary between like five to ten feet. Coastals are your bigger are your bigger ones. Uh, jungles they range kind of between like five to eight. So you kind of you gotta do your research, know what you're getting into as far as size, because the size of these guys is going to determine how much space you need for them, because they do require a little bit more space than your typical ball python. They are semi-arboreal. That just simply means these guys like to climb. Uh, they're not completely arboreal, uh, but they do like to go down onto the ground. They do, however, love to climb. And Xena is probably, I would say, 90% of the time up in her branches and her perches. But the only time she's not out is if, uh, basically, if she's going into shed, then she goes into her tub or not her tub, into her cave and hides until she has her shed cycle. Comes out, sheds into branches, and then she's out the whole rest of the time until the next cycle, basically. Their temperament. If you notice, I said anybody that knows the stories about Xena. Xena has a very unique temperament. As you can see, she's not doing bad right now. We'll see how she does throughout this video. Uh, but Xena has, is slightly unpredictable. As a hatchling, actually, she was the very first snake that ever bit me. As a hatchling and babies, carpets are naturally known to be defensive and nippy, and that's where they get a bad rap because people just don't like getting bit. I don't like getting bit. You notice I'm wearing gloves. And basically, that came, that came down to because I got tired of getting bit. I felt like it was too many negative interactions with her, so I thought, well, maybe the gloves will like help mask my heat signature. And lo and behold, it did. It helped calm her down some. And you can see now she's not doing bad. So she is, and part of that's also age. She's about two and a half going on three. So as they get older, they do kind of mellow out as well. A lot of the nippiness from the babies in hatchling stage is just because everything's so much bigger than them. And naturally, the, everything, you know, they are at the bottom of the food chain when they're little. So they think everything wants to eat them. So they got to be defensive. They aren't aggressive though. Don't let anybody tell you any any snake is. Don't let anybody tell you any snake is aggressive because they're not. They are defensive. They don't go looking for trouble. They try to stay away from it. So uh, just keep that in mind. I, these guys get a bad rap, but look at how beautiful she is. That is just one beautiful snake. Carp is probably some of the most beautiful species out there. Uh, a lot of the Australian species are just phenomenal, to say the least. Uh, but they are, they can be defensive. Uh, I do have one, Lagatha. She, I would put her around my neck. I would not worry. I don't even, I just give her a little tap on the nose with the snake hook, let her know it's not beating. And I'll reach right in there, pull her out, no problem. She's com as docile as a ball python. So I, I have no worries with her. But Xena, you gotta take a little bit extra care, a little bit of a extra step, and I'll I'll include the uh, link to 
my uh, defensive snake video shows me getting her out of her previous enclosure that she was in. We'll get into the enclosures here in a minute. But it kind of walks you through how to work and kind of ease out a defensive snake to hopefully have a good interaction. So let's get into the husbandry of them. For babies and hatchlings, uh, you, you can you can keep carpets in tubs as babies and hatchlings. Uh, keep in mind these guys do like to climb, so it, preferably if you can get them into something where they can climb as they get older and bigger because they do love to climb. Uh, you can keep them tubs. Uh, glass enclosures are fine. I keep mine in glass enclosures at the moment and PVC enclosures as well, which PVCs are probably the best route to go. Uh, you can stack them so they don't take up nearly as much space as what the glass enclosures do, and they look a lot nicer. Plain and simple, the PVC stuff looks very, very nice. So, but hatchlings and babies, I would keep in a, between a 10 to 20 gallon tank or a small tub as they grow upgrade the size uh sub adults rough like xena here two and a half she's about five foot long i have her right now in a 40 gallon glass uh dual opening terrarium and there hers is on the top and lagatha is there on the bottom you can actually see her out but that's how i keep them right now it works fine for them it gives them the height to climb it's roughly the dimensions i think are like three foot uh long by uh, I want to say like 18 wide and like 17 high. So it gives them a little bit of length, room to stretch out, a little bit of height to climb up in and, you know, feel like they're in their natural habitat, so to speak. Um, as they, once they do approach that adulthood though, I do want to get them into PVC rack or not PVC racks, PVC enclosures. It's going to allow me to house them a little bit nicer. And also as they get bigger, you know, the the glass tanks just take up too much space. The PVC the, the PVC stuff will allow me to stack it a little bit nicer because I gotta get a mail for these two girls, and then of course you know we're gonna be having holdbacks. So the holdbacks we keep in the racks for a little while, but eventually they'll grow up and they'll need to be in PVC stuff too. So gotta be able to stack them. And for adults. You want to be like a four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. So that's four foot long, two foot wide, roughly about two foot high. Uh, just because some of these snakes do get on the larger side. Zena's mom, I was told, was an eight foot carpet. So she was on the larger side for a jungle. And, oops, sorry, sweetie. And so she's got that likelihood that she's going to reach a larger size. So I'm just kind of getting prepared for when she does get to that point. She really wants that tripod. See right here is a perfect example. Carpets love to go for the higher ground. Uh, so that's basically covers enclosures. Now let's talk about temps. For temperatures, you want a 90 degree hotspot, depending on subspecies that is. Uh, diamonds, I know, do like it a little bit cooler. So do your research there on exactly what subspecies you're getting as to what temperatures to keep them at. This is just a basic, I, I just want to say like a basic guideline care guide for carpets, mainly focusing on like the jungles because I keep jungles. You want a 90 degree hotspot. You want to keep a 75 to 80 degree ambient temperature and cool spot so like our my cool spot on our carpets is right about 75 to 77 so you have that nice temperature gradient from about 90 to uh 77 roughly so to speak the humidity car this is a great thing about carpets they do not require high humidity they do like to like i've noticed with her uh when it comes to shedding i'll miss the cage down that way they get that extra boost of humidity in the uh, glass cage, or that way they get the extra boost in the enclosure, just to help with the ease of shedding. Um, I do not want to have to try to take a stuck shed off of Zena's face because she has come so far with the handling aspect, as you can tell, that I just don't want to screw up all the hard work and all the time I put into trying to tame this girl down. Because this, about a year ago, this video would not have happened this smooth. I would have been taking bites left and right. 
shedding time, just like almost with any python species, you know, mist it down a little bit or do whatever you have to do to make sure that ambient humidity is up around like the 60% level. That's basically covers temperatures and humidity. Depending what subspecies you're working with, some of this will vary as for the temps and for humidity, but like I said, it's a rough guide. For bedding, let's talk about bedding. I use what I use for my ball pythons, which is Freedom Breeders Cocoa Blocks. Uh, it holds the humidity good, it's very absorbent, and it just looks nice. And I, when it comes to eating, I don't have to worry about these guys ingesting any of it because it's so nice and chunky. A lot of people use, like, you can use uh, Zumet's Forest Floor, you can use other coconut substrates. I do recommend using something that's got some chunkiness to it. That way your snake isn't ingesting it. I've used Brian Barczyk's Reptile Prime already for these guys. Actually, I keep a bag of that just in case I don't pay attention to how what my level is for bedding and I run low. So I do keep a bag of that just because it does hold humidity very, very well. It is very nice bedding. I just like the chunkier stuff. Some people use Aspen for these guys. It's kind of whatever you find works for you. Just like a lot of the stuff in the hobby. If it works for you, use it. If it's good for the animal, that's what you need to go with. Um, no matter what, you have to go with what is best for these beautiful animals. Just look at her. She is just stunning. She really wants that camera. Anyway. So that basically covers bedding. Use whatever you want to use as long as it's good for the animal and, you know, absorbent, hold some humidity, go for it. <laughs> uh, as far as decor and what you need in your enclosure, you need, of course, a water bowl. You need to have perches for these guys. Like I said, these guys love to climb. And I have basically, my setup is very, very basic. I've got a couple perches for her couple caves I'm trying to cave on the hot and cold side actually underneath the one cave is on the underside of the tank anyway is the heat mat for and then I have also I don't know if you noticed the dome lights of a night light which is I know controversial and then I have the daylight lamp just that way, since she is most of the time up in her perches, she has a basking area during the day. She can go there and bask at nighttime. I don't notice the red light bothering her at all. If anything, it seems like when that red night light kicks on, she knows it's nighttime and that if anything comes in there, it's food. <laughs> I mean, these guys are super food oriented and we'll get into the feeding aspect. But the, the red night light, I do not find disturbs them at all they seem to do super fine so i do keep like i said daylight and a red night light uh, about 50 watts is what i use for the day and the night um in the winter months i do go up just a tad for the daylight just because the snake room's down here in the basement and i don't i'm not up to full capacity yet as far as uh snakes in the rack so it does stay roughly an ambient around like 70 five or so in the snake room itself so i just a little bit higher wattage because in the winter time temps drop a little bit more in here so it just gives her that extra degree or two that she needs and she does use it i mean she loves her basking areas yeah you'll want hides water bowl caves hot and cold end and another thing you need to remember as well for your heat mats and your heat sources keep them on a thermostat the night lights, I don't. The lights, I don't really have on a thermostat because I've worked out the wattage and stuff to work with uh, the temps. But your heat mat, if you're using heat mat, make sure that is on a thermostat. Never use an unregulated heat source like a heat mat or anything like that. That is just a big no-no. So that basically covers all the husbandry aspects. Let's go with feeding. These guys, like I said before, are super, super food oriented and love to eat. These girls, for whatever reason, will only eat mice. I don't, they came from two separate breeders and they still, both of them, will not eat a rat to save their life. Cena gets very, very angry if you put, go to put a rat in there. She gets into a very defensive striking frenzy and it's just not good. So I do not try to even feed her rats anymore. I did try, I don't want to say I don't try. Every once in a while I will throw, if I have a 
small rat that hasn't been eaten by one of the other snakes, I go and just hoping that maybe one day she'll take it because she is getting bigger, but no luck yet. Uh, Lagan says she just uh, kind of, she doesn't really strike defensive at them, but she just wants nothing to do with them. But you can feed them mice, rats, birds, like uh, baby chicks, quail, I know some people feed them. Uh, just kind of, a lot of, you can vary their diet if you want to have them be a little bit more flexible. I, I know a lot of people, you start out hatchlings on uh, mice pinkies, just because hatchlings are so small. And right, go, you know, take them from there to the hoppers and so on and so forth. I would try to get these guys on rats, though, as soon as you can. Just because my, like, I have to feed these girls extra large mice. And I don't like having to buy mice. I'd rather just be able to buy rats and go from there. I mean, they love their food. They're, like, basically, like, garbage disposals. So if these girls would eat mice, I would have an out for when the ball, if I have a ball python that doesn't eat, I would have an out to get rid of that rat instead of just throwing it out. These girls eat extra large mice. I feed them once every two weeks. Uh, these guys do have an extremely, and I mean extremely efficient metabolism. Uh, you can see, I mean, she is not overly, she is not skinny by any means. She has perfect, perfect body condition. And that's, you know, one extra large mouse every other week. Um, if they were, if she, when she gets to the adult size, if she was eating rats, I would take, put her to like basically every two to four weeks for feeding, just because you don't want to overfeed them. Overfeeding can be bad for these guys, it's just like any other snake, you don't want to overfeed them. But uh, it, they also really don't need to be fed that often. But hatchlings, I would feed once a week on pinkies and work up from there. Once they get to about a year or so, maybe two years old, start going to every every other week for the sub-adults. And then once you get to the adult range, that's switched to like every two to four weeks, depending on what they're eating. These girls, if they don't ever get off the off of the uh, mice, they're probably going to be stuck on every other week. Or I might even have to go to every week, depending on the size of the mice I can get at that time. So that's basically feeding. I'll actually include a link to a feeding video. It'll probably be over here, maybe. Or here. Um, you can see what I'm talking about as far as how food oriented they are a lot of times at night when I'm down here in the snake room. I'm technically being hunted because any movement they see, they think food's going to be coming in. So, and you'll see that in the video. Zena's very on point with what's going on around her because she always wants to eat. Uh, let's go, let's move on to handling. Handling is a big thing. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves with her. Um, you need to, you need to, I would suggest having a nice pair of work gloves. You don't need something super heavy duty, like super thick leather gloves for these guys. You don't need that. Um, you do need a snake hook though. Every time I, before I go into that cage, I at least touch them with the snake hook. Normally kind of tap, not bop them on the head, but I do touch them around their head and, you know, rub them with the snake hook on their body. That way they know it's not food coming in because I, w I guarantee you that if you don't do that, they will probably think that they're being fed because they'll see those heat signatures coming in and they'll get excited. And you don't want that. That's not fun for you. That's not fun for the snake. That's just bad experience for them and does not help any situation at all. So touch them with the snake hook before you go into the enclosure to work with them. A lot of times I know Xena, she's very cage defensive. So I, if I'm just doing the water bowls and I'm not really going to get her out and work with her, I just kind of keep the, use the hook to keep her slightly at bay. So that way I just do a quick, easy water change and get back to doing my work in the snake room. But the gloves seem to help tame her down to where, I mean, we're going on 20 minutes or a little over, probably going on 20 minutes here and she's still out, which is at, just fantastic. This is probably one of the longest times I've ever held her. And she's just doing great. I was kind of curious as to how this was going to go. But, uh, yeah, the gloves seem to really help. Uh, gives her one less heat signature to see moving around a whole lot. So she's a little bit calmer. And 
if she were to bite, you know, it's not going to go through the gloves. At, at this size, it might, I might get a pinprick from her. But when she was a hatchlet, or when she was a smaller, nah, it, I didn't even feel the bite. Um, taking a bite from when they are babies doesn't hurt. It just bleeds. I mean, if you've gotten a tattoo or a shot at the doctors, that probably hurts worse than getting bit by these guys, in all honesty. And the, as you can see, they are great. They're beautiful. You do, they do take some work, though. You know, you got to work with them periodically. I was working with her basically once every, I want to say, probably two times a week is what I was working with her. You know, give her some cool down time from the interactions and stuff. And it doesn't take a long interaction. If you interact with her for, say, five minutes every couple of days, and as long as it's good interactions, eventually you'll end up having a nice, wonderful interaction like this. Which I'm still shocked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still shocked. Um, but yeah, you just... Shorter, positive interactions go a lot longer than a long interaction that has difficulties. And because these guys, remember, these guys are super smart. I swear, it seems like they're always thinking. You know, everybody always says about how smart retics are. Well, these if retics are as smart as what they claim, I would say carpets are right on their tail at second place with being on the uh, smart level because these guys seem like they're always thinking but uh hatchings can be nippy so you gotta take that you know as it is uh, i think that's where a lot of times they get the bad rap because people get the hatchlings they're nippy and they say that's it i don't want to work with them you just gotta put the time in and fall pythons you can have be nippy as well anyway so just work with them folks that's all they need. They just need a little bit of work sometimes. And it's, a lot of them are super mellow and docile and you have no issues. But you do have the few like Xena here where you just got to give them a little extra time and care and take your time with them. And look, you can have a great interaction with a beautiful snake like this. So that's going to be it for this video, folks. I hope it helped. If you guys want more, like a, more of a direct care guide on like say jungles, uh, let me know. I can do it. I would love to do another video with Xena out like this. Or even get Lagatha out. You'll never see me work with both of them at the same time. But, you know, carpets are so fantastic and so amazingly beautiful. My breath is just taken away every time I look at this girl. And, yeah. <laughs> so, make if you haven't already, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you do want to see more carpet uh, care guide stuff or more carpet care stuff. As time goes on, we are getting more into carpet python stuff. So hopefully we get a male this year at some point. So that way he's got a year to grow up before Xena's ready here to breed. And you're going to start seeing, we're going to start having the carpet python clutches here before you know it, folks, which I'm super stoked about because I want to see what this beautiful girl produces. So if you see all this yellow spotting, which they call tipping in the black, I mean, I just want to see how much of that she passes on because that there's what really drew her to me was all this tipping. She really wants that camera. <laughs> so leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see more carpet content let me know if you have any more ideas for any additional content um don't forget sunday nights eight o'clock eastern 8 p.m eastern we have our lives so don't miss those and a lot of times we have some special guests from other breeders and everything joining us we do like little interviews just kind of sit around talk get to know them talk about other things in the hobby and industry and just have a flat out all out good time and don't forget to hit that notification bell and hit that subscribe button everybody i mean who how why wouldn't you want to have more see more content with beautiful snakes like this and some of these beautiful ball pythons i'm working with so hit that subscribe button everybody and all the support is greatly appreciated we'll catch you next time here at warfels morse take it easy later